In this video, I'll demonstrate a workflow for rough animation using the tools and shortcuts we learned so far by animating a ball bounce. So for this ball bounce animation, I'm going to start with describing the path of action, describing the movements by putting in the keys first. So I'm starting with the beginning position, where the ball is hitting the ground, and I'm flipping back and forth right now using the shortcut keys, uh, the comma and the period. Uh, so that I can make sure that it's having the motion that I want so far. So it's very important that while you're animating, you're always flipping to make sure you're getting the movement and the feeling that you want. Notice that I'm not paying too much attention to um, uh, cleaning, like clean lines, right? I'm not at the cleanup phase. All I want right now is the sense of movement. I'm putting in a squash right now. I'm describing that movement, noticing that it's misaligned, so I'm just going to quickly uh, select it using the uh, control key while I'm in the brush tool so I can move these uh, initial keys into the right place. So keys you, you want to have sort of in the place that you want, right? So because from these keys you're going to be building the rest of the animation, so you want to make sure that it's as... Um, it's describing what you want, the movement and the feeling. So right now I'm testing the squash, flipping back and forth to see how it feels. Um, I'm turning on onion skinning so I can kind of check the placement and the path of action too. And onion skinning is turned on by Alt-O. And here I am getting ready to paste in the last key where the ball returns to its original position at the apex. And what I'm going to do is because I want the first and last key to be the same, I'm just going to copy my first frame and paste it in the fourth uh, keyframe position so that it describes the, um, the full motion where the ball bounces, hits the floor, and then goes back to its original apex. And I'm just scrolling through. Now I'm ready to start uh, putting in the breakdowns and the in-betweens. So I hit shift J to insert a blank cell in between um, the um, first and second key. As you can see, I'm flipping through and, and turning on onion skinning so that I can check the movement and the, and the breakdown and in-between keys. So I'm going to continue to break down. So I'm visualizing um, my timing and spacing where I kind of want to have an ease ease out or ease in. I'm never sure which, um, which phrase is the right one. But anyway, I'm trying to get it so that it accelerates out of its initial apex position. So I'm going to continually have the distance but favor the apex a little bit so that it has that sense of easing or slowing in, slowing out. I've heard it described that way too. So right now I'm just mainly using shortcuts with one hand and drawing with another. Inserting blank cells in order to in order to get the, the frames in between my existing keys. Now in Toon Boom there are things you can do where you can assign keyframes and you can jump from that um, and label your things as breakdowns and whatnot. But um, I actually don't like to interrupt my workflow for, for that sort of thing. I guess if you want to work that way, that's totally great. Um, but what I like to do is just basically throw down the keys and then start inserting the breakdowns, especially for a rough animation. Maybe for cleanup or further passes, I might start assigning things and breaking things up like that. But Initially, what I want to do is um, not have anything interrupt my workflow and just animate. So all I really need is how to step forward and back so I can flip, onion skin, and also how to insert um, cells in between frames. And here I am um, breaking down and in betweening the second half of the animation where the ball is returning to the apex after it hits the ground. I'm not paying too much attention to volumes and stuff. Maybe I'll, I'll kind of correct things because it's so easy in Toon Boom where if I see something that's really, really not the same volume, maybe I'll just quickly select it with the control tool and um, resize it really quick. But again, 
Right now I'm just trying to describe the rough movement. I'm not too concerned with volumes, not too concerned with um, uh, the, clean, the clean lines. You can see that I'm sort of adjusting the, the volumes right now because I'm noticing that the balls or the circles are really small. But this is again a rough pass. So I'm playbacking and I'm adjusting the stop frame since my animation isn't 60 frames and not too not that long uh, not that long. So I'm adjusting it to the 13 so I can get a better sense of the playback, looping it. And the movement's pretty good. Um, what I'll do now is increase the exposure to twos. And I can do that through the menu option. Selecting all the frames, right clicking, going to exposure, and setting exposure to two. Notice it kind of sticks at the top because I have the top um, drawing held for four frames essentially, so I'm just going to start deleting and decreasing the exposure of the first and last frame. Just adjusting where the stop frame is again, so I don't get that blink. And I have a rough ball bounce. Later, I'd adjust volumes, clean up the lines, finesse the timing and spacing. Uh, but for now, it's all about movement and feeling.